pile, these chips that we have, they're going to allow me to see what you are thinking. Okay. So I'm going to have you close your eyes. It only works if your eyes are closed. Good. And then now I'm going to have you imagine some things, and I want you to picture them in your mind's eye so that I can see them. I want you to imagine the worst movie that you've ever seen. A movie so bad, it hardly oh God. even meets the description of a movie. There's cardboard. There's cardboard. It's, it's, I see it's it. everywhere. It's, I see amorphous cardboard. It, but it's, but it's not Ben and Arthur. It's not Ben and Arthur. No. No, I see it too. It's not Ben and Arthur. Now imagine a movie that has to have been directed by a serial killer. Now, a movie so insane and unintelligible that it, it rides the line between reality and insanity. Are you picturing the movie? It's horrible. Do you see it? This is, this is horrible. I see it. Oh God. It's... Oh it's... God, it's after last season. No! <laughs> First off, fuck all of you who recommended this movie. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I texted Brian and said, I hate our fans. <laughs> I wrote, I'm getting cancer, or this is cancer. Yes. Hello and welcome back to the 38th episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, a show where we watch terrible movies and truly has the sentence never been more apt, terrible movies. I tell you, if you should too, you shouldn't. No. <laughs> I am your host, Mr. Brian Shelligo, joined by always, as always, by my other host, Scott Hinton. Kyle, uh... Uh, it's a fan request episode because we've gotten maybe our most request. I don't know. Other than old Neil, there, uh, it's, prob <laughs> it's probably probably just broke the illusion. Everybody knows they, we get tweets all the time. People see it back mm. there, but um, well, probably know. our most. <laughs> you never seen that? Yeah, no, no, lots of people know this. Um, probably by our most requested movie, other than a Neil Breen film, I would think. Other than I am here now, uh, and I had watched the trailer. A long time ago. And I was writing that line of like, I'm not convinced this isn't satire. Like, this isn't intentionally like yeah. doing a weird, like a weird art project. It, you know whenever I, mean? I saw the trailer, I was like, is this some sort of like bizarre, like, like, I'm not going to say like Robocop kind of futuristic, you know, hypocrisy of the world. Oh, yeah. But somewhere in that wheelhouse. I thought it was like some really weird student film that was like, like student art house film that was like. We're going to do everything wrong because that's the new cool way to do things. You know what I mean? I thought it was like not intentionally the way it is. And I... I'll, gi I'll give you this. It felt like a Dogma 95 film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Furthermore, you must not have any sounds that are recorded separately from the image. So banish your big orchestral soundtrack, your overdubbed gunshots, and your voiceover. The sounds must be real. But after some more research... And reading some more and listening to the director and the writer and some interviews, I think this is legit. I think this is a... I think this is a crazy person. I don't say lightly. I think this person may have several diagnosed or undiagnosed uh, mental uh, issues and decided to write and direct a film. Because uh, this is incomprehensible <laughs> and uh, awful and technically as grossly incompetent of a film as we've probably ever reviewed the director his name is mark, mark region region people speculate that's not his actual name that it's like a screen name basically that's probably a smart move after this release too. yeah um but apparently he also directed a short film that played in the new york film festival in like 2005 called like medium wave medium or medium waves but i couldn't find it anywhere online but there's i read i went down a whole reading about this guy or trying to figure out what's up with this movie so, yes, we're finally doing it. And boy, let me tell you, 90 minutes has never been so, I don't even know the right word for it, tedious. I mean, I was Google searching shit on this while the film yeah. was playing because yeah. it was just that boring. It's so boring. It's so boring and it's so bad. And it it's, well, let's just get into it. I, I can't preface it anymore. But No, we need to talk about the most important part of this. The budget for this film. Oh, yeah. Supposedly. Five million dollars. 
supposedly. Now, in the interview I read, the guy said that they're shooting. They shot this in like a week, and it's on shot on thirty five million. I film. believe that. I and, absolutely and believe that. The shooting budget was like under fifty thousand dollars. Like when they were actually shooting, like for all this props and everything, and everything going on, that was like no mm-hmm. money, basically. Um, I want you to also keep in mind. Uh, Rock and Roll Nightmare was shot for about that. Yeah. So twice the movie. Just shows you the I, difference. Twice is even a <laughs> 2000 times the movie that this is. Um and and but supposedly the that extra that 5 million that the director insists was the budget cuz they didn't have that Coca-Cola money. <laughs> yeah. Um he got they got that after shooting for the post production process. And somehow you'll look here and see. Uh, you tell me where that four and at point nine million dollars went into the CG and graphics for, and post process for this movie. What is she doing? Because I don't see it. I don't. We're entirely convinced that the graphic Somebody, designers found like some, this guy, Mark Regan, is, they looked at him and like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. Let's and go ahead said, and take him for all his worth. I think it was like a, a college kid who could kind of use a, a 3D graphics program and was like, yeah, here's some shapes. They're perfect for your movie. Four million dollars. Well, and I don't even get. I guess we can get to it now. Like the credits lists like thirty people on the graphic, mm-hmm. and I'm like, there's zero percent chance this wasn't just one person. Like the, it's when you look at the graphic, like you could do it in, in an afternoon. Yes. You could do it in an afternoon. Now, now we're we're surmising on the grounds. Neither one of us know no. it. No 3D model no, 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 at no, no. all. But as somebody who knew even the tiniest bit. And had mm. taken a few classes, could do what's in this movie in now, a few days. Now this is back in ni- two thousand nine. It came well, out two thousand nine. So I don't it's know probably when they made, shot it, let's say you know earliest two thousand eight, something like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Maya was a pro. Maya's like the most commonly used three D rendering program that yeah. I know of, and I don't think it was even out yet. So I don't know what exactly. Well, but it using. looks like the, the graphics aren't dated to the mid two thousands. These look like. <laughs> Like something from they're the just, late they're just mid polygons. 90s. They're just yeah, except for the one scene where the one. Okay, let's get into. It. We're just talking. We're kind of jumping around, but it's like the one scene where the yeah. <laughs> so let's get into this movie. Uh, Index Square Productions or Incorporated is the name of the company that produced this film. Uh, they used to have a website. It doesn't exist anymore. I really, it's unfortunate. <laughs> Which is how the people who've interviewed the director were able to talk to him. They found his contact information through that site and called him up, basically. So, uh, you got a classic 45-second opening title card that's after last season gets God. slowly revealed what? for like 45 for seconds. For no reason! There's no payoff! It's just like the movie, Kyle. It's a microcosm of the film. It's like this slowly... If, if only I had known. <laughs> slowly uncovering the film, and then there's no. it doesn't mean anything. This is an MRI machine. Yes, so we get the great cardboard MRI machine. I want you to keep in mind, MRI is magnetic... Magnetic res- resonance imaging. Yes. I think. What, what does most of that entail? Magnets. A fuck ton of radiation <laughs> to some degree. Of, no, it's magnets. Well, it's... it's it, big magnets. Ra- radiates in and out. Like, it, it, it has to. That's how you get an image back, right? Right, yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know enough about Well, the point MRI being is... Now. You're not going to have that in a fucking living room somewhere. No, no. And this is definitely <laughs> you need in that in, living room. You need that in a shielded room. No, it's in, yeah, they're in very specific types of places in hospitals. They're not just in a living room. <laughs> and they're not made of cardboard and plastic. But this one is. Uh, and so a guy gets an MRI. Who's got... Uh, an, Parkinson's. Parkinson's. And he's got a twitch in his hand, which... Can you control your shaking? Well, I think I can control my shaking for a short while. Spoiler, that guy is, and it comes back at the end of the movie. It's an Did FBI you, agent. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> All right. Um. So, 
So he has an MRI, and then they're like, take a bunch of pictures, and like, this is when you first realize, like, oh no, this is so <laughs> yes. awful. Because he goes in the MRI machine, and then they're taking the pictures, and then while the, you, you, it's making the sound that an MRI makes, we just stare at blank sections of walls. The first image is about to form. Every single time there's a cutaway, it's just a blank it's section a of blank wall. It's just a blank section of a wall or a chair or a thing. Like it's it's just <laughs> nothing. I'm going to take one cross section. Oh my god. The the, <laughs> the doctor I guess these students are in they're, they're med in school. like med med students, yeah. Okay, so they're looking over some CT or yeah, some uh, MRI scans, CT scans, whatever yeah. you want to call them of of brains that have schizophrenia. <laughs> and this is like what, 15 minutes almost of, yeah. of just talking about yeah. this. Yeah. The entire time I was just like can something happen? Yeah. I have some of the MRIs. We took the images of the brains of patients suffering from extreme cases of schizophrenia. And then we are, but we are cutting back and forth to Ed, who is the guy who or, that we see killed. Uh, sitting in his like his apartment or whatever. I, I I couldn't make heads or tails of it. It's just a guy sitting and in a kept chair. kept cutting to this this woman who I guess just is she just there to find his body? Like it's all yeah she's yeah. There for? She she moves. She's like I moved into this new apartment downtown. That's unexpected. When did you learn about it? Mm -hmm. I'm on the third floor. I live in an apartment building on the east side of the city. It's about 50 minutes from the bridge. And then, but she knows Ed because she calls him by name when she finds him. She goes Ed. Hey. And I'm like, wait, all right, whatever. So, but we're cutting back and forth between the talk about the schizophrenia and this guy. So I thought this guy had schizophrenia. Like yeah. I thought that's the yeah, setup. No, like, that was... like, cause he keeps hearing things and like going to check and there's nothing there. Who is it? Mm -hmm. And then one time he hears the thing and goes to check and gets stabbed. <laughs> It's this is uh in in the film world they call it parallel action. Yeah, right? yeah, parallel, yeah. And this is two things that have nothing to nothing do with to one do another. With each other. But you think they do? Yeah, like, that's, you that's think what parallel action do? yeah. does is it yeah. makes that kind yeah. of but no. No, 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 just this is a different part, a different story going on, but we're talking about schizophrenia. Many of these patients hear voices inside their heads. Some hear voices that seem to be coming from across the street. Which doesn't play into this at all. Unless, unless, unless the two main characters are both schizophrenic. Yeah, or <laughs> this whole thing is, is, a, is a ploy to make you feel like a schizophrenic. Um, well, I mean, you know, art imitates life for, yeah. for Mark Region. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I love she says this line when she's doing the MRI. She goes... I gotta take one cross section. Gonna take one photo of a cross section. I'm going to take one cross section. I'm going to take one photo of a cross section. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just repeats it like- Thanks for telling me that. Said it wrong and then says it again. And so uh, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of this is there wasn't dialogue or like there kind of was. And they definitely a lot of the times weren't given direction on what to do. Cause 90% of this movie is shots of people in a room looking around. Like this, and then not nothing happening, and then going, Craig? Oh, God. <laughs> like, that's the whole fucking movie. All 
All right. And this is where I could tell like 15, I'm not even 15 minutes in. I'm like 10 minutes in and I wrote, okay, I can already tell I'm going to constantly fluctuate back and forth between nobody is in, is possibly as incompetent as the person who made this film to make a movie that's bad. Mm-hmm. So that it has to be intentionally satire or intentionally bad. But then I also, on the other side, I'm like, if that's the case, nobody's that brilliant to make such a terribly bad movie. Like, I can't decide if this person is yeah. either the most brilliant filmmaker ever <laughs> or so incompetent as to not be believed. Like, it's... And I think it's the ladder. <laughs> Former ladder. Definitely ladder. <laughs> Former ladder. Uh, another thing, another thing, is the roommate for for this girl. Like, they, they have a scene where they introduce her and they yeah. introduce... The foreign foreign exchange student friend or whatever the. I don't know much before that. Um, my mother didn't go into the details. She spent most of her early years in a small town. I can go as far back as my grandfather. He grew up in Ringham. Yeah. But they have this whole discussion and dialogue with them, and you think they're building up something to do with their characters at all. Nothing. No. Nothing. What did he do in Ringham? He became a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, my father also grew up in a small town. He uh, stayed in his town until he was 15. I do love how one woman's like, oh, I like your new uh, radio alarm clock that you yeah. got. <laughs> and it's just... And it's... it's a radio with like a clock taped onto <laughs> it. Wow, you got some nice radio clock. <laughs> when did you get it? Um, last week, yeah. The... Uh... Buttons on my old one weren't working anymore, so. And I was like, okay, again, now that seems intentionally stupid. I don't. <laughs> I also, and here's the, here's the thing where like so many conversations and lines don't go anywhere and don't mean anything. The guy, who, Ed, who's in that room, he calls the library before he gets stabbed. And it's relevant. It's, it's completely, he just calls and goes, library reserve section, please. Yeah, can uh, you transfer me to the library's reserve section? Thank you. And then walks you know, up and gets. I, I I think we're missing something here. I think Mark might actually be much older than we think he is, because that seems like something you would do before the age of the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> I think that's true. I think that that he's like an older. Yeah, the guy is not all there, I think, is what it seems like. I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but it is. This movie's fucking crazy. All the all the rooms they're in, like, the, the, these these rooms that they're in are just mind-boggling. It's like a warehouse. It's like it's, old... it's a warehouse, but, like, things are, like, warehouse. wrapped. In, they're, everything's wrapped in white, like, what, what, what like is... Like, cardboard or, like... Well, and a lot of them have wallpaper like like taped up and stuff. Yeah, like their their apartment, the doorway is literally just wallpaper that's wrapped around a and, frame. And then it's got two little pieces of wallpaper like <laughs> taped to hold it on, or it's so fucking weird. And then yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's and then there's like yeah, like big like white sheets of like uh, cardstock or on walls and stuff, and and mm-hmm. like big. Oh my god, I don't know this movie. Todd has injured his hand over the weekend. He's he said that he's lost some sensitivity in his right hand. So when the, those two students are having that conversation in that room, and then Sarah leaves, or like comes back to get a book and then leaves, they're talking in the room. It cuts to a shot of Sarah walking out to weird piano music, and then cuts back into the room, and it's the most random. I'm like, she has some photos that show the nerves in the spinal cord. We just literally cut away from this conversation to watch her walk out the front door and then we cut back to this conversation. Just to give you some, like, just how this room doesn't make any sense, there's a scene where she goes in later in the film and I couldn't, there's nothing to give me a frame of reference for scale. Yeah. And she walked in. It's like, how the fuck did that just give us a lot bigger than I thought it was? What the fuck? This... It, this movie, if it was designed to make you feel insane, they nailed it. It, look, it looked like a close-up of whatever they were looking at because everything is blasted with light yeah, in this yeah, film. Yeah, it's all and just... then she walks in the frame and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? 
they just put one giant floodlight on everything in this movie. Like when they light it, they just throw a floodlight on it and then then go. It's yeah, I loved your your, your text to me. It was this this is negative space and, and low key lighting the movie. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Um, this is poorly shot and poorly lit. So then we cut to uh, pro 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 Raris, pro Raris, the the the, the company, whatever corporation they're the interning. Yeah, at. yeah, that they're interning at. And when it cuts to the outside of the building to introduce it, the the, the <laughs> name of the building is on the side with like as a a, 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 a video editor text. Like yes. they, they made a title and slapped it on the side oh, of the building. Another thing, this was all shot on thirty five millimeter film. This was. Sh- Edited, I guarantee to you on a linear editing system. I would, I would blow you, my mind, but because you you can tell on a lot of things. Because anytime they need to bring in a second source of sound, they cut out whatever they have. It could be that it could be not linear, or it could be somebody who just doesn't know how to use a nonlinear editor, and so they're they literally okay. Here's the shot I have. I want. I'm 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 gonna take it now. I need to bring in different audio. Shop out everything that's there. Put in the new audio, and then you know like. Well, that's essentially move. doing linear editing on a non-linear uh, yeah, editing think, system. But I think that's what I think that's, yeah, that's, more, a, that's another better. thing. That's another thing of why I think like if it was Mark who edited this, that he's like an older guy who yeah, was brought wrong. up on tape to tape. Yeah, yeah. I, and he's there. There says there's an editor that's not him, but I don't believe it. I that might be that might be Mark's real name. <laughs> yeah, I, there's a, there's so many people in the credits on this, and I'm like, there's zero percent chance that the crew is like sixty people, and I'm like, no, there's no way. This was like three guy, like a guy and a, an, an assistant. When she walks into the building for her internship, Sarah does, and she says, "I'm here for internship," and we just get all these shots of hallways with oh, like yes. third floor, second floor, arrow this way, arrow this way. I'm like, <laughs> everything's direction. In addition to that, every time they they start okay so this is filmmaking 101 whenever you are to start a shot yeah for for editing purposes you typically don't have a character start in frame no (laughs) never no no. do that well it depends this this happens so many times and they cut it like five seconds before they're supposed to start yeah yeah oh there's yeah no there's a lot of times where the action doesn't start yet (laughs) and then like the person's standing there and it cuts to them and then they start walking. Hi, I'm a new intern. I think I'm on the third floor. And this happens because what's his name goes into that building first, I mm-hmm. think. Uh, or that might be late. That's later. But it's the same thing where uh, uh, I don't even know his Matthew. name. Matthew. The guy. Yeah, yeah. Matthew, maybe the main guy. Uh, where they're going. That It's the one later where he's doing the second part of his study that night or whatever. And it, it starts with him standing there, not moving. And then he starts walking. <laughs> So uh, she shows up at this building for her internship, and what's his name's there already, and they're chit chatting in the waiting room, and the waiting room is just a giant empty room with two chairs in it. <laughs> Everything's wrapped in white. Yeah, it's so crazy. And so they're talking about how his study. He did a, she took some sort of questionnaire for him, mm-hmm. and then now she's gonna do the second half of it. <sighs> so what do you think of the questions? Uh, I think that you'd probably get some really strange looks if you asked those at my dinner date. Yeah, they probably have second thoughts about ever going on another date. Like, and they schedule it. They sit in the for entire like time. Minutes. I'm just looking at the top left hand corner of this of this scene. And I'm like, Why is there so much empty space there? Yeah, <laughs> this is like the worst when it comes to the the negative space in this film. Yeah, yeah, and then so uh. She, I guess she was there. She said she was, I'm an intern, but then she goes to a class, like, right after. She mm-hmm. walks out and goes to a class. Um, but they, they also discussed that, oh, the, uh, three people have been killed in the last four months. There's a serial killer, and they said Ed was found dead. Ed Brown. Oh. The, um, the student discovered dead in downtown apartment. And, and he was also a student. Like So there's, like, three students yeah. have been killed in, like, the last four months. And there's been three homicides in the past four months? Yeah, I'm mean, they keep showing where the homicides took place. Oh, uh, and they don't seem very upset about it. No, I, well, you know, <laughs> he's Ed, he's so just then, a weird guy, yeah. always calling the library for yeah. shit. <laughs> so then she goes to, uh, 
her this class or whatever and she walks in and sits down and the teacher gets up in front of the class and has, oh and then teleports <laughs> New synapses will form. In oh, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> she has a picture of a, a brain, brain yeah. taped to a big metal frame, <laughs> and she just starts talking about left brain, right brain, something or another. In some rare cases, a very young person may have lost a great portion of one side of their brain, and the remaining side will develop new functions usually associated with the other side of the brain. <laughs> Oh, this is the, ah. So then we meet the parents, mm -hmm. and I thought they were Ed's parents. They're not, because they're talking about how like they somebody died. It's one of the other kids who died. Craig, we find out eventually. Um, it's his parents, and they're like cleaning up his room or something like that. Where he and and they're like going through his stuff. I've unpacked some of his belongings. His pictures look recent. He mailed them to me a couple of weeks before the day he was stabbed. And then we randomly, we only, we see them for like five seconds and it's irrelevant. And they just talk about how their son's dead. And then, and then we cut to um, a random lady who I think has no purpose in the film. And like, it oh, must be some sort of some about arm the lady. Yeah. yeah. Neurological symptoms or whatever. Arm lady. Like, I'm like, what does this have to do? What is the yeah. symbolism of this woman? Because she's trying to raise her arm. Raise your left arm as high as you can. Mm -hmm. And they, the guy, our doctor, put nerves from yeah. her foot into yeah. her arm. I took a small portion of the nerves around the ankle and grafted them into your arm. And now she can raise it a little higher. <laughs> it's than... that, uh, it's that, that surgery that pitchers sometimes yeah, get. Yeah, it's like Tommy John. Yeah, kind of. Well, it is Tommy John. No, no, no. Tom, well, this one's get, different. Like, well, because Tommy John isn't nerves. It's, no, that's it's ligaments. Ligaments or whatever, yeah. yeah. But... <laughs> Anyways, so then and we come back to her at the very end of the movie, and now she can raise her arm all the way, and I'm like... Lift your left arm as high as you can, please. I can raise my arm and perform most of the motions that I could perform before the accident. There must be some meaning to thank this. God we have, thank God we have this progressive storyline going. There must be some meaning to this. <laughs> So Sarah or somebody or the, her roommate is sitting in her room talking on the phone to her mom. Oh, the last time I saw her, uh, it was Lexington. Yeah, she only spoke a little bit about where she was going. But she's having a conversation and then she just stops and hangs up the phone. No, Lori doesn't know her. There's no goodbye. There's no nothing. She's like, oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to lie. Gonna... I may have blacked out at this point. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, mom. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, uh, and then she starts, because that's her friend shows up, and they have a conversation about the, wom the woman who was her friend from the first scene where uh, that's not Sarah but is the br other brunette that's friends with Sarah's roommate. The, the super uh, French person. What did he do in Ringham? Whatever, yeah. Walks so, in a European country. <laughs> she said she was getting lunch yesterday with her friend who ordered shrimp and then had an allergic reaction to the shrimp what? and had to go to the hospital. So she starts eating, you know, several bites of her shrimp and all of a sudden she feels really ill. She actually had to be rushed to the hospital. And she, and they're like, she's like, what? And she never was allergic to shrimp before that? And she's like, no. She was actually diagnosed with an allergic reaction to shrimp. And she, she didn't know she was allergic to shrimp? No. She told me she's had shrimp many times before. This was the first time she developed an allergic reaction to the food. End of scene! <laughs> what was the point of all of this? What is going on, man? I don't understand. Like, they're just conversations that, and it, and it made me, it started a little bit doing, and even more so, because this is even more so, the thing that I did with, uh, uh, American hippie Israel, in Israel. Yeah, yeah. And questioning like this might this is this secretly brilliant? Is there something here that I'm not Yeah, but getting? at the end of that film there's actually something to take away from it. Yeah, that's fair. There's no takeaway in this one. <laughs> none none whatsoever. Yeah, I worked there for a few years, so I grew up in Salisbury. It's what, forty miles from Charlotte. But I go by the race track every time I commute downtown. Yeah, um, I haven't been so then uh, after they make plans uh, him and what's her name make plans to, uh, Sarah and the dude make plans to do the second part of his study uh, is Wednesday a good day 
Mm, Wednesday I have something in the evening. What about what about Tuesday evening? So we cut to that next night or that next week or whatever. And and then this is the start <laughs> where I was talking about. And he walks into the building, but he doesn't. He walks up to a wall. Yes. And then it cuts and he's in the building. Yes. Yes. And then it happens with the woman where she walks up and to a she, wall. Well, she slides her card yeah, and on, on what is clearly a plastic piece, <laughs> just a black plastic yeah, piece yeah. that has no nothing. nothing. Yeah. And then, but it's just a wall. I was like, what? there's no door there. What is going on? And first... I gotta say the the money spent on the wardrobe in this film. Perfect. White shirts, yep. baby. White button down shirts. I know the weatherman said it was the temperature was like in the eighties. But button button ups and blue jeans. Yeah, all the way. Yeah. Uh, so and they're both wearing winter coats, and so they get inside and they talk about how it's so cold out, but that it was eighty degrees yesterday. It's cold outside today. Yeah. Yesterday felt like summer though. I know by noon. Everyone was in shorts and t-shirts. Now, I, I do know that Minnesota has some crazy yeah. weather swings. Yeah, I guess it's possible. But it was just like, again, I'm like, does that mean something? What does the weather changing mean after last season? There's got to be something here. <laughs> There's got to be something to this. This is where they introduce the, the hook, the hook yeah. of the film, basically. Yeah. This is what made the film. This is basically, when the guy was writing it, this is what made the film interesting to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the thing that he thought was interesting, is this guy, but he doesn't. But he does, but he doesn't. So the scene that happens is they get in there and they're talking and then he oh, has this box on the desk and he opens it up and it's clearly a well, cardboard hang on, box. Hang on, hang on. He flips a switch and it opens <laughs> up. Somebody <laughs> off screen with monofilament pulls the monofilament <laughs> to pull the top of the box off. Um, and he pulls out these two chips. We never even really get to see them. I think they're just like no, little clear yeah, stickers yeah. or something. Um, and he says these chips allow people allow us to allow me to see your thoughts. So the chips help you see like the thoughts that a person has. Some of the thoughts that the chips able to interpret. I'll see a basic composition of geometric objects. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I'm just gonna state this for, for the record. That's amazing that this essentially untested to our knowledge yeah. technology is being used for a college students yeah. like he just came up with st it case study yeah just like his study he's like i don't know i'm doing an experiment with him this is gonna read minds <laughs> okay <laughs> all right cool um and it also i noticed in in this location that they're in which is where they're in most of the rest of the film is uh, must be right next to a goddamn highway or a main thoroughfare. Because so many so, fucking cars. So much traffic that they try to like clean out, but you can still fucking hear it. Not at this point. So then will I be able to see your thoughts too? You open your eyes or just remove the chip from your temple. So they put these on and they start the, they put them on their temples and they start and the process. This is where the money went. <laughs> oh boy. This is supposedly where that 5 million bucks went. And I said, oh, shit, we in the computer now, baby. Think of an object. He answered, think of an object. Think of an object. Any object? Simple one. So she starts thinking of things, and we start seeing floating rectangles, cubes. That's it. And it's just a few minutes of that. And then we see a tube, a cylinder with some rectangles on the outside. And then every now and then it cuts back to them with their eyes closed. And then it, and then so that happens and then it cuts back to them and he goes, what were you thinking of? Oh, and at this point, oh, by the way, all this dead silent. Yeah. There's just like nothing going on. Mm -hmm. It's just like, yeah. And I saw, I love that he goes, think of an object, a simple object. Any object? Simple one. Because we have to do this in after, we have to create these graphics and we can't do complicated things. So think of like squares and shit. <laughs> um, 
So she thought of apparently, she says it was a a a, a vase or a basket. I saw a cylinder. Was that what you were picturing? Oh, I was picturing a basket. And it was this yeah. weird cylinder with squares on the rectangles on the side. And he goes, oh, I could see it. Okay. And then they do it again. And this time we actually get some shapes that are a thing. And it's birds. <laughs> we, we get birds who started fucking up on their keyframe. Yeah. And the wings were going all over the place. Yeah. And then we get like a flowers or something. Yes. And then and then we get in right after the birds this and the is, flowers. This, this, this is, is when it goes crazy. This is something that's straight out of a fucking... Like, this is what made me think, all right, this is a fucking horror film now. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. So she imagines a person, but with a crazy person. face. A crazy face. It's an eyeball. We start on his his eyeball and it's like this weird thing and then it zooms out to his face and it's supposed to be Ed but it's just a amorphous blob person it, it, this is this guy basically making an unintentional horror shot yes oh it's in terrifying I was actually what a lot of this movie, especially around this part. If I was like, if I was watching this at night, Home Alone, I'd be kind of scared. <laughs> like this is kind of terrifying. It's because there's like also random shots of what it, it looked like just whatever serial killer made this movie, like wandering around a warehouse, like filming chairs and random shit, like his home videos. I'm like, this is kind of awful and terrifying. It feels like a Plinket review without yeah, a Plinket. Yeah, exactly, exactly, it does. My pizza rolls is done. Do you want some pizza rolls? They're hot and pizza-y and tasty. In fact, it's all I really eat. But anyways, and so she sees a person stab with an icicle. <laughs> with, with a... With a very narrow cone. Yeah, a very narrow cone stabs Ed in the chest. <laughs> And then they like open their eyes. And she says, I've seen this before. They just appeared out of nowhere. I mean, they're the same people that I saw right before Ed Brown was murdered. She says, I like last week or whatever, when I had my eyes closed, I saw And this is Ed something that stabbed. whenever they did this, I was like, all right, are, are, is this now supernatural where they have the ability to see the future yeah. or or what has happened? Yeah, yeah. That's some sort of prognostication of, of some degree. Yeah, something's going on. Like, this could be interesting because, yeah, it starts to take this weird like pre-crime like she's going to be able to see things and maybe they're going to turn into a thing where she can stop they can stop a killer which is kind of what they say they because they say after this like oh well if you could see ed getting stabbed maybe you can see who the next victim's going to be and we can stop it but if you can see a murder before it happens we can do something about the next one i mean yeah what can i do i can't do anything well the police work with psychics to find clues and looking for missing people doesn't work that way. And then that no, it doesn't work that way. Because spoilers, none of this is actually happening. <laughs> spoilers, none of this means anything because none of this actually happens in the movie. Shut up, Brian. <laughs> we need to pad out our review. <laughs> um, I had a glimpse of your last vision, but I'd like to see the entire thing. I'm able to pick up clues about the assailant. Oh, and then so while they go back in the machine, I think, to, I keep saying the machine, but like, like into her head. Because it's like the Matrix. I know. But they go back into her head and then we start cutting, side cutting to a, a house, uh, like a, a yes. building somewhere. And we start with an opening establishing shot of a refrigerator <laughs> for like 84 seconds. They keep cutting between this, the shot of this actual room, yeah, and then shots of the computer simulator. Well, her brain yeah. thoughts, or whatever, yeah. Everything builds up to a human figure, yeah, and like an actual human. Like this one looks like a sim. Is he someone? It's a person. Yeah, I see a woman. She's wearing some sort of blouse. Like like from The Sims. And what I think this was was the default character in whatever program yeah, you're yeah, using. Yeah, like default person A. Blah. <laughs> She's in a room. I, it appears to be very small. Oh, 
Oh, uh, well, yeah, and they, they do some, before they get to that, he does some arranging of, he goes, imagine some cubes and arrange them, and they arrange into a question mark. He's like, it's a question mark. Like, it looks like a hook. Or question mark? Of course it is! It doesn't mean anything! <laughs> um, and then, oh, oh yeah, imagine a flat surface, and then a letter rises out of it. So, picture a flat surface. Out of the surface, one letter rises. From the alphabet? Yes. And a giant R rises out of it? But we don't, what is that? See, no, no, it's no, no. those situations that make me think that, like like you were saying, you know, all this computer stuff was done after they were done shooting, but it's stuff like that that makes me think that somebody paid them for some, like somebody was like, well, you know, I made this for my graphic design course. Can you put it, find a way to put it in your film? Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Here's what it made me think is that, and I actually wrote this down at one point because apparently, according to the director, they made these graphics after the fact. To me, what it felt like is this guy who made this movie, who's a little, uh, was messing around in a, like a 3D uh, art or gra graphics program and made a bunch of random shit for real. And then said, I can make a movie about this. Like, you know what I mean? Like drew a bunch of random shapes mm -hmm. and shit. And then like the, the scene where a woman getting stabbed and that sort of thing. He's like, oh, this could be cool. I'm going to make a movie and then wrote a movie. That's what it felt like to me when I was watching it. But according, according to the director, they made the graphics after the fact. I'm not sure I buy that. So then here we go. We cut back and forth to the room. Yes. This um, entire scene of it's, it's, it's a woman being attacked, basically. Yeah. By by the same person who stabbed Ed yeah. earlier. Yeah. <laughs> this the scene of her throwing cubes against That's the wall. wall. <laughs> She's and then she'd occasionally turn to the side and go, man. <laughs> <laughs> she does though. She really does. Just man. <laughs> but she's just throwing, and she's like, she's throwing things at the at, at a person, and yes. and he's like, I can't see anybody. Who else? I don't see anyone. Because we just see a wall. Well, yeah, it's just see a wall. It looks like you throw things at a wall. And you're throwing like, what the cubes. Fuck is going on? Just cubes at a wall. <laughs> And then, in the most terrifying moment of the whole thing, a fucking crazy guy comes through the wall. Wait, I see something. With, with a, a object on his face, which is why I thought these were the default things, and they didn't want to show any, they wanted to show the mystery, they're like, how are we going to do this? I'll just put a fucking circle in his head. A spear over his face. So stupid! It's so stupid! <laughs> oh my god! What is she doing? Oh Jesus Christ! And then um, <laughs> but the, the, I gotta I gotta pre the, the scene where he's like in the room with her now, and there's a part where she's like th throws another cube <laughs> yeah. and pretty much makes that. <laughs> 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 oh no but she like oh, throws no. the cube and it just like rockets off of him oh. <laughs> the best. The best thing. oh jesus uh. <laughs> oh. oh no okay um <laughs> Okay, um, 
And I was thinking, oh, it's her roommate. Because it kind of looked like her roommate, or Sarah's roommate. Mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe it was her who was going to get stabbed, and that would kind of make sense. Well, no, no. Those characters aren't important no, enough to bring back. No, they're not relevant at all, yeah. Um, so then we get the sweet money shot of the murder where he actually stabs her in the chest. <laughs> Take this ice <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well- Oh, the vision, it's... it's stuck. There's... I don't know what this sentence means in my notes. <laughs> Angie, period. Someone left a book in the living room, period. Angie is in the place where... The, oh, okay. So we cut to the, the that house where we, we've been cutting back and forth to, and a guy is there now. Oh, right. And he walks up and knocks on the door in the room we assume where this murder was happening. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Angie, someone left a book on the table. Angie, it looks like someone left a book in the living room. Is it yours? What? what? Who is this? What? Who are these people? Yeah. What? Oh, is Supposedly, she dead? this is where this murder has been yeah, taking place. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, it doesn't matter. No. There's an object. There's, there's some kind of ornament on the door. Yeah, it's a board. It's a, there's a small board on the door. And then, so, they cut back to our guys, they wake up, and they're like, wow, we did, or not wake up, but they open their eyes, they're like, oh, wow, we just saw a murder. And then one guy goes outside. I couldn't tell where she was. The surrounding didn't have enough detail. I, I only saw, I mean, I saw the inside of the room, and I, just outside of the house, and that's not enough information. Whatever his name yes. is, he goes, he goes outside. outside. And in the road, there's just cardboard. There's just, I don't know what this is. Oh, that was him being outside? Yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. And th- that scene was also terrifying because it's like in the middle of night, in the middle of the road, there's snow everywhere. And then there's these weird cardboard monolith. Pictures. Yeah. It, I was like, felt like it, it's, this is insane person stuff. Yeah, it is. It legit. I was like, I feel like I'm watching a, a, a home movies of a serial killer. Like this is terrifying. It feels like you're watching. It feels like something with Neil Breen where he doesn't connect this back to like government corruption no no no. and he just leaves it out there yeah (laughs) and but he so he comes back from being outside and says this while i was out there a man went into a house a woman was trapped in a room she has multiple stab wounds and is in critical condition yeah while I was out there, an ambulance went to a house on Lara Street. A woman was trapped in her room. She has multiple stab wounds and she's in critical condition. I need some fresh air. What? Where did you get that information from? Like, what? He just walked outside, apparently heard, heard the news on the wind that some woman somewhere got stabbed. And he was like, that must have been what we were watching in your head. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. No, no, let's um let's just finish the four questions and then and then we'll switch the chips because I want to be able to see a picture I've created. Uh <laughs> And then so they decide to go back into the thing again to finish their questions or whatever. And this guy, I thought he was going to end up being the killer, the her partner dude, which mm-hmm. would have been a fun twist cuz the way he fucking looks at her when she's like puts the thing on her head, he's like It also makes sense with all the schizophrenia that they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was thinking that's where it was going to go, but it, no, it's not. And then, and then Eggface shows up again. Yeah, well, and then she goes under the sea, and we spend oh. like 20 fucking goddamn minutes. Oh, okay, so with, like, it's like what, coral? You have some I guess fish it's coral. or something? It, and then coral, this, this green block with some... With wh- four cubes in it or three yeah. cubes. What the fuck was that? And by coral, you mean a, a a cone with a cube in it. Yes. <laughs> and then fish. I don't, and then we spend 20 goddamn minutes watching this giant rectangle with cubes in it that I, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Uh, I'm not going to speculate, but the person, whoever was working with this 3D modeling thing, they didn't know how to change the lighting on it 
uh, yeah. like the, the lighting scheme within the program. Yeah. So whenever you zoomed in and the thing started moving, the colors started changing yeah. on the light because the digital light couldn't was well, not moving sorts, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And then and then while they're doing this, we start getting random cuts of of like moseying around. I assume it's supposed to be POV of the ki- POV of the killer mm-hmm. in their building or whatever. But he's just like walking around <laughs> looking at chairs, and it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> um, and then we get random floating rectangles and this weird. And I'm gonna ru- I'm gonna do the the fucking uh, CSI research on this. But like we get this weird sound effect over these floating cubes that kind of sounds like back masked speech, like when you run the audio backwards. You know what I mean? It kind of sounds like. Like somebody talking and it's run backwards. It's fucking terrifying. And we're just sitting and I'm like, what is what is even happening? What is what is my life right now? And then he, uh, the killer eventually comes up to yeah. psychology exercise, which yeah. is what he pays, he put on the door to their room to signify where she needs to be. Yeah. So he, we know that the killer is now outside the door. Yeah, that's right. Holy shit, the murderer is outside your room, idiots. Wake up, is what I wrote in my notes. He opens the door. And what's there, Brian? Nothing. <sighs> Who's there? The door just opens and then it shuts and then a chair falls over. <laughs> So he's a ghost now? And now for 15 minutes. Call this scene. 15 minutes. This fucking scene. We deal with fishing line, basically. Yes. That is attached it to is- object. It's 15 minutes of our two main characters in a room with a ghost. And now it's so weird because we just saw the guy. Like when he opens the door, he's a guy, but then he's not a guy, he's a ghost or something. And then so he's walking around in the room, knocking things over and they're like running away and then they randomly occasionally get like sliced on the arm by his ghost knife. But then, and they can't open the door because it's locked or something. And then, but so they literally, like you said, it's 15 minutes of them just like a, a wide shot of them and they like look around. And then something falls over and they're like, oh no. It all, it, but it all culminates to Matt waking up and being like, huh, oh, I was asleep this whole time. The chair next to the wall! Matt? Matt? Are you okay? I was, 
having a terrible dream. That's that's what happens. It was a dream. I was asleep this whole time. It was all a dream. Everything for the last 30 minutes of this movie. was a dream. The chips don't exist. The murderer ghosty thing wasn't think, a thing. I think the chips do. No, no, no okay. because what he did, he fell asleep reading a study about the idea of making those chips. Sorry, I'm late. I mean, I was in a discussion with a professor from number seven. There's a cut to him holding a piece of paper and it says something like, uh, Brain chips could so, let you read other if, people's If I'm to thoughts. get this right, the entire hook of this movie does not exist. existent. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. The, the hook then becomes. Thanks, Mark. The hook then becomes ghosts exist? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like what? Well, they they hear something outside. Yeah. And there is an actual dude stabbing people. <laughs> over a corpse now for the record for the record he's demanding the lab access code i was trying to get into the lab there are six digits to the access code now what are the last digits to the access code (laughs) yeah yeah he's over this corpse saying what's the rest of the access code (laughs) stab (laughs) this this is working earlier why aren't you telling me things (laughs) so stupid and then he's Oh, oh, they do start doing, um, cause then they just start doing a questionnaire before they hear the sound. And I love, this is a little thing, but before they hear the sound and go out there, they start resuming. And what they're actually doing is just like a weird questionnaire where she's just like asking them questions. And one of her questions is so great. She goes, if you had two wishes and you could change any event from your timeline of your life in the past 48 hours, what would you do? Right now, more wishes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says, change anything you did in your last 48 hours. What would you change? Not, not like. So you're given a wish. You can change two events within the last 48 hours of your personal schedule. What would you change? Well, you right now I get more, I get wishes. I would get more wishes nice. right now. Yeah, got it. But his idea is, well, I was kind of tired Thursday. So I think I would have went to bed earlier Wednesday. Thursday I attended lectures, but I didn't fully hear everything. I was half asleep. Wednesday night I would have gone to bed like two hours earlier. I wouldn't have been so exhausted. And then he stops, and I'm like, okay, one, that was the worst wish ever. Two, you get another fucking wish, asshole, but he doesn't ever say the second one. I wouldn't have been so exhausted. In your dreams. God, I'm so annoyed. Uh. Okay, so yeah, and then the guy comes after them. Uh, and they like go in the room and shut the door, right? Yes. Oh, and then he comes in the room and looks around. The room is not big. <laughs> they're right there. He's coming. Yes. He's like, and they're just standing in the corner. She's on the phone calling security or whatever. What the? The. And then incoming errant chair. And then, yeah, a chair slides across the floor and then flies and hits the guy and knocks him out against the wall. And I thought, oh, did what's his name throw that chair? No. (laughs) The only thing I could hear whenever that happened was probably like WWE commentators. So now a go after they, he goes, did you see that chair? It just flew and hit the guy and knocked him out. The, the chair, it, it knocked him out. The chair knocked him out? The chair, it, it just lifted itself up and pushed him against the wall. But then they hear a voice. They hear a voice start talking to them. Mm-hmm. Sarah. Did you call me? No. And now they are schizophrenic. Now they are, yeah. Uh, and it's a ghost, 
and they find out, they figure out it's Craig. Craig, what happened after you collapsed? I saw myself lying on the ground. Who? who? We've never met Craig. Who? Nope, no idea. But apparently he was one of the other kids who was murdered prior to Ed. <laughs> so he says he can move objects sometimes. I can sometimes move objects. Now that he's a ghost or whatever. And I love he says, How can you move objects? And then it cuts to a shot of a chair. And it holds on the shot for like 20 seconds and nothing happens. And then Craig goes, I'm having trouble moving that chair. <laughs> I'm having a difficult time moving that chair. Well, and, and then it's uh, the the backpack as well. She asks if you can move the yeah. backpack. It's like, it's, it's a little heavy. heavy. It's a little too heavy. It's a little too heavy. Can you move my backpack? The bag is too heavy. I couldn't hold on to it. It's like, I'll move this ruler though. Yeah, I can pick up this ruler and move it around. I can lift the ruler. I don't understand. So the chair is too heavy, but he can pick up and throw the folding chair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I go, there's 13 minutes left in this movie. How fuck is this going to wrap up? Yes. Like, what is the, how are we going to wrap this shit up? Because this shit just got crazy. Did you know you've been stabbed? I recognized myself on the ground and I remember being stabbed. So then they just stand, it's so many shots of the two of them standing there going, Craig? 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 For like 20, that's like the next five minutes of the movie. And then, so the FBI shows up and they arrest, what's his name? Who was our Parkinson's Who's the Because they cut, there's a shot from behind and his hand and he's doing the twitchy hand thing that he was doing earlier and he turns around and it's the guy who was getting the MRI in the beginning. I'm like, what is the point of that? What is the, okay. So, and then we get the one of the best phone conversations in any film ever. It's just the FBI guy explaining the story to us for like a minute and a half. Eric Nelson is going through an evaluation of his mental state. They still have a lot more questions to ask him. I thought what he was doing inside the parole's company building. He goes, well, we got the bad guy here. It turns out he was trying to break into the into the, the research lab at Blank Laboratories because he wanted to get a special research thing there. And that's why he's been killing students for the past four weeks because he's wanting to get the special security clearance code to get into the research lab so he could steal the thing for the other competing corporation he works for. And it's like- Eric Nelson was trying to get into research laboratory. He walked to an employee who was working that night and asked the employee to open up the lab for him. And when the employee wouldn't open up the lab for him, Eric Nelson began to strike him. Just forever of this guy just explaining he everything did. that happened. He worked for the Parolis Corporation until last year. He says that he'd been hired to obtain some confidential research data from the Parolis Corporation. For the record, he just explained the plot to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Yes, he did. <laughs> That's what this is. This movie is just Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Come with me and you'll be... <sighs> okay. Uh, and then we run back into the woman who can now raise her arm fully. And that's an important scene. As important as any scene is in this movie because none of them... Well, it's, it's progression, you know? Yeah, yeah. Passage of time. Uh, the conquering science, conquering our mortality and whatever, something. Anyways, um... <laughs> Then we have a, we listen to my favorite phone call where uh the whatever the guy's name is the main character talks to some guy we don't know on the phone about his brother who we don't care about and how his brother moved to a place with mineral hot springs. Yeah, for a while. you can swim in mineral hot you can springs because it's good for you. Yeah. He says his brother is staying in an area with a lot of hot mineral springs. In Centerville, the places are all around there. There's a lot of places you can stay and swim in a spring. He says a lot of tourists go there to swim in them. Some people go there to swim in the water for therapeutic reasons. Okay. And that phone call ends and we don't care about it at all. 
Uh, and then co- he, but he's sitting in his office or something, mm-hmm. and he's at his desk. His, his coat his falls. Coat falls off the wall. Oh, and he goes back there, and he's like, "Craig, Craig, Craig." And then it's like twenty seconds of him just looking around, and then it cuts, and we're like, "What? Okay, cool, great, great, great." Great. And then we get to the final scene. The final scene of the film. It's a woman that we don't know and uh, Craig's mom. Mm -hmm. They walk into a house. And they've been they've been fixing up this room the entire Now this felt very the 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 language in this, and you can tell me if I'm feel crazy or if I'm crazy that I did I was interpreting this in some sort of symbolic way that they were going for or something. Uh, she walks in. And they walk in and she goes, a wall used to divide this room right down the middle, but we took it down so now into two rooms. And now we took it down so it's just one big room. A wall used to divide this room into two smaller rooms. We knocked down the wall. Uh, and it also uh, used to be cracking a lot and then we painted it over so now, you know, it looks good. You've turned this into a really neat room. We repaired the walls. Then John and I painted them. Before that, you could see crack lines extending from the ceiling. And I was thinking the room was a metaphor for the human brain. Because earlier, there's the conversation where the or the, the teacher says something about the left brain and the right brain. And somehow one half can start doing the other thing. In some rare cases, a very young person may have lost a great portion of one side of their brain and the remaining side will develop new functions usually associated with the other side of the brain. And imagine the room is split down the middle and then but they broke the divide between so now the left and the right rooms have become one room. Yes, that's called a lobotomy. Have reached peak wokeness. <laughs> I believe that is the defining term of a lobotomy is the uh, No, that's where they drill out your prefrontal cortex, I think. I thought it was splitting, the, like crossing the hemispheres. No, that's not as... all about it. Well, that is where they take out part of your front of your brain so that you, uh, it's like the part that like. Well, it's, it's something involved going through the eye because I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammer it through. I saw a documentary on that. <laughs> <laughs> I I do weird things in my free time. Yeah. So anyways. Um, also, Brian, you're giving this guy way too much credit. I know. Yeah, I know. But I was like, well, does that mean something? I, I love in the. Uh, when the final walking, thing. We, yeah. we see a picture of Craig that is the worst fucking photo I've ever seen. And the young man in this picture is Craig. It's Craig. Yeah, it is. It is half Craig, half the wall behind him because there's so much fucking headroom. Amazing. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> and it's clearly the same walls that they've been shooting yeah, around. Yeah. They just pulled a guy in and they're like, hey, uh, you can be a photo of Craig. Let me just shove. <laughs> the, here, I'm going to hold the camera up here and take a photo of you. Yeah. It's amazing. And then she goes, uh, oh, is this your son? And she picks up and she goes, yeah, that's blank. Uh, he's blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, and then this must be Craig. And, she, and then her, uh, Craig's mom says something like, yeah, if only things were different. The picture was taken last year. He looks younger than his brother. Had things been different, he would have finished his fourth year of medical school in June. And then they share the most awkward hug in the history of where they like kind of walk over to each other and she like kind of puts her hand like and then they hold each other and walk off camera and the movie ends. We have a room next to the living room. And I question everything. The idea I had when I was like, hey, Kyle, we should not do a podcast. We should start a YouTube show where we watch bad movies. I regret that decision. (laughs) Because of you fuckers making us watch this goddamn movie. (sighs) 
Oh my god, it's so this, bad. This not movie. <laughs> this not movie. And then I love in the credits, real quick thing. There's like literally 30 different animators. There's mm. like lead animator, motion graphic art. And I'm like, this is all nonsense. It was one person. Yes. Yeah. Well, even when they, they went through the sound, the sound people as well, and one of them was fully. I was like, that's fucking bullshit. You did not fully anything in this film. <laughs> there's a couple of there's a couple of spots where I think they they had fully of feet walking. <laughs> Just over feet, feet walking, objects hitting a wall, and yeah. a meh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going on that again. Um, and then uh, at the end, it says special thanks to the Screen Actors Guild. Liar, <laughs> you are a liar, sir. Well, I will say this though, in all fairness, the acting isn't terrible. Especially like Sarah is not a particularly bad actor. Now it's hard to tell because it's all one take. Every scene is one, sh yeah, wide shot and that sort of thing. So it's hard to know. But anyways, it's the acting isn't terrible. But it's yeah, it's crazy. And I was like, this this all has to be fake. Uh, there's no way all these people worked on this movie. There's a zero percent chance that like a hundred people. All these names have to be fake in my head. Like they have to be made up to make it look like it wasn't just this one guy that made this movie. It's like to make it look legitimate. I think I because. Mm -hmm. If it's not, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Anyways, yeah, in my bad. opinion, this movie's fucking bad. No, man. it is. It, this is a not movie. It's terrible, and it's not even that funny. There are moments that are like kind of funny, but it's so fucking. Yeah, just boring. cut this into like a two minute video. Two minutes, yeah. The trailer is honestly all you need. That's like mm -hmm. the perfect way to consume this is the three minute trailer because it's it's that's you get it, <sighs> and you don't need the hour and a half of boring bullshit. So yeah, that's it's bad, bad. I don't. And I hate, I hate all of you so much for making this line. Not making us, but I'm just, oh God, it was brutal. It was fucking brutal. Anyways, until next time, keep watching movies. Don't fucking watch. No. Don't, don't. watch after last season ever. And anybody who ever recommended it to us, unsubscribe. Go away. <laughs> Not really, but you owe us money. <laughs> Give us money now. No.